What is going on guys, CW Pokey here back with a brand new Pokemon Sun and Moon Theory. Following the E3 showing, we are learning more and more information about the new titles and excitement continues to grow. Coinciding with that excitement is mystery. There are still several things that we do not know or fully understand yet which keeps the speculation building and building until the games are actually playable. Just prior to the E3 showcase, we were shown a trailer featuring two of Zygarde's new forms, Zygarde 10% and Zygarde Complete Form. Expanding on Kalos' incomplete Zygarde, it's awesome to see these guys build upon Zygarde's backstory and provide more depth. But what about Pokemon Z? The rumored third version of Pokemon X and Y hasn't been announced yet, and I have a strong feeling it won't actually see the light of day. Well why is that? My theory is that Zygarde will play an essential role in the Pokemon Sun and Moon. And we also might finally know who the third legendary is alongside Solgaleo and Lunala. And that Sun and Moon, while it is a new generation, in some ways it's still a Gen 6.5. And lastly, Pokemon Z may still happen, except it might be under an alias like Episode Z. How'd I come up with all of that? Well, let's jump straight into the recent trailers. During the unveiling of Solgaleo and Lunala, we also got to see their signature moves, Sunsteel Strike and Moongeist Beam. Being the cover legendaries, it makes sense that both of these Pokemon and their signature moves share many similar qualities, primarily in the animation. Both Pokemon rise up to the sky and strike down with a massive beam. But they're still a little unique. Solgaleo, for example, strikes down onto the Pokemon with his own body, while Lunala's attack is solely a beam. Aside from that, I didn't really think much of these two attacks, until I saw Zygarde Complete's trailer. During Zygarde's unveiling, we got to see a few of his signature moves, but the important one to know is Core Enforcer. Rising up to the sky, Zygarde gathers his energy and strikes the opponent with a huge beam that creates a Z shape on the ground. An incredibly flashy move, but there's something I simply couldn't ignore when I saw the trailer. Core Enforcer looks nearly identical to the animations of Sunsteel Strike and Moongeist Beam. I mean, when you put the three side by side, the resemblance is uncanny. Yet all of them have unique animations at the end, and this is where our questioning begins. But first, remember that this is just the start of an early theory. The similarity in these moves could easily be a mere coincidence rendering this whole video useless, but that's not the point. The point is to speculate and consider the possibilities before we know the answers just for fun. So let's say there's a reason why these moves share similar qualities. Let's dive into what all that could mean. Game Freak loves to throw curveballs, and Pokemon fans love to use patterns to predict titles. For example, ever since Platinum, we have never seen a third version, yet many fans expected Pokemon Grey, and then Pokemon Z, and some even thought Delta Emerald would happen despite remakes never seeing a third version. So the fact that Game Freak has seemingly dropped Generation 6 to move on to Gen 7 with Sun and Moon doesn't seem too shocking now, but that doesn't mean they still can't shake up the community anymore. Let's look at Gen 6's Pokedex. Being the smallest generation with only 71 new Pokemon, nearly half of other generations, that left many fans thinking this generation would be built upon with DLC or some other different theories. Some believe that the new Mega Evolutions introduced built upon that list as compensation. But maybe, in some ways, Gen 7's Pokedex will borrow Gen 6 mons to create a Gen 6.5 sort of situation. Now mind you, I know that Generation 7 is 100% confirmed already. There was an interview stating that Sun and Moon is indeed a new generation, but that's not what I mean when I say 6.5. Instead, I mean that Pokemon in Gen 6 may be way more important and heavily utilized in Gen 7. Volcanion, for instance, is a Pokemon that saw no reveal in X and Y and barely managed to appear towards the end of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire's lifespan. The original theory used to be that Volcanion was in one of those mysterious locked power plants in Kalos, but given Alola's Hawaiian region, a place with many volcanoes, I think it's safe to say that we will probably find Volcanion in Gen 7, possibly as a post-game mythical legendary. And the scene goes for Zygarde. The XYZ anime had fans thinking Pokemon Z's announcement was imminent, but it never actually happened. And now, moving into Gen 7, Zygarde has way more going on in those games than in the previous generation, the one that it originated from. So what about the third legendary? Every single generation since Hoenn has three cover legendaries, two who represent the different versions, and the third legendary who is either the third version mascot, and or the balance between these other two Pokemon. In Kalos, for example, we had Xerneas and Eveltal, the life and destruction Pokemon, while Zygarde was the order Pokemon. And this makes total sense, just like every other trio. Now with Sun and Moon, we have Solgaleo who represents the Sun, and Lunala who represents the Moon. Already, a lot of fans, going back to that Fable 3rd version, are speculating what concept the 3rd Legendary might be based upon, such as an Eclipse, or Stars for example. But, what if I told you the 3rd Legendary has already been revealed? 
And what if I told you it was Zygarde complete form? Now don't forget Zygarde's typing, dragon and ground, and Zygarde is said to be the protector of the earth when the land is in danger. So what if the Gen 7 trio is the sun, the moon, and the earth? This would be a pretty insane twist. One form of the legendary completes one trio, and the other form completes the other. And this all ties into the fact that Zygarde completes signature move Cornforcer looks suspiciously similar to Solgaleo and Lunala's moves. Additionally, when Zygarde completes design was leaked, many people noted the blue and red colors on its body and compared them with Xerneas and Eveltal, which both Pokemon represent red and blue through their color schemes. However, Solgaleo and Lunala also represent red and blue, so it could be possible that the design choice was set to match the Gen 7 legendaries as well. Could he really be the third piece to the balance between Sun and Moon? Well, if he is, maybe that's where Pokemon Z will be placed. In the post or late game story of Sun and Moon, much like the Delta episode in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Meaning that in place of Pokemon Z, we could have something like Episode Z, which is a special segment of the plot to help resolve the conflicts between legendaries, villains, or some other unknown forces. It's exciting to think that maybe the XYZ anime is meant to bridge the gap between Gen 6 and 7, having a relationship closer than any other generation thus far. But, well, it is just a theory. Maybe none of this will happen at all, and Zygarde's completely pointless to the plot, legendaries, and sun and moon as a whole. But that doesn't mean I want to discourage discussion. What do you guys think of Zygarde's role in Generation 7? Do you find it strange that we may not actually see Zygarde get a significant plot point in the games, meanwhile Rayquaza, Giratina, and Kyurem found closure in Emerald, Platinum, and Black and White 2? I can't help but think that Game Freak loves to think outside the box with new generations and games, and the only way we can possibly predict what they do is to also think of the crazy, think of the impossible, and suggest an insane idea like a quote unquote Gen 6.5. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and stay on the lookout, there's another idea for a theory that I'm toying around with which may or may not be fairly related to this one. Will that theory ever happen? Well, I'm not too sure, but stay tuned. And that concludes my theory that Zygarde Complete Form bridges the gap between Generation 6 and 7 and will play an essential role in Sun and Moon. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and ask what they think. If you enjoyed this theory, check out my other Sun and Moon related theory about our first possible hint at Diamond and Pearl remakes. Yes, Gen 4 remakes. Or check out my own custom gym that I designed if I were a gym leader in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Video. Peace out.